don't you appreciate God's presence with you here tonight? Praise the Lord. That's why we're gathered in. Amen. Because we, we want that in our life that preserves us. It helps us. Even though God wants relationship with us, my supervisor at the hospital, and she won't mind me saying this. I uh, Friday had, Thursday had emailed her. So she had emailed me, my, I had emailed her back, and uh, just uh, you know wrote a little encouraging thing about the presence of God in her life. And uh, she said, I have to tell you. She said I was listening to the radio on the way in and thinking about how that God pursues me. And she said, I pulled into the hospital, she said, and uh, I parked, and she said, uh, the presence of the Lord was so strong, and the, the, the ministering to me of how He loves me, and He wants relationship with me, and how that He's with me and preserved me. She said, I just uh, broke out in speaking in other tongues. She said, I opened my car door, she said there was someone there beside me getting out their vehicle as well. She said, I sure don't know what they thought about me speaking in other tongues. <laughs> I said, that's all right. Amen. Maybe they needed to know God loved them. Maybe that's the language they heard it through. Amen. Aren't you glad for the Holy Ghost? Amen. For the visitation of God's prayer. Aren't you glad for when He just falls upon you and you can't even speak in, in regular uh, English? He just gives you a heavenly language to just begin to fluently talk in as you worship and uh, uh, as you enjoy His presence. I love God, don't you? Amen. Turn with me to the book of Ezekiel chapter number 33 tonight. Ezekiel 33. So glad for each of you here. Amen. Wonderful to have Paul in the drums here on Sunday evening. Amen. And good to have everybody else. As I said, Barbara and George uh, and uh, 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 Steve, glad to have them back. We've missed them. And I'm glad that they're feeling better and can be back with us. I'm going to read my text. I'll revisit it after I make a few statements. Brother David, you're linked so well with setting the platform for my message tonight. And uh, so I appreciate that. I appreciate, uh, you know, uh, folks who give of themselves and their ministries. So many folks here giving and God using them. And uh, that that's phenomenal. That's what the body of Christ is about. Amen. And I think it's good, Brother David, that, as you said, it challenges us from being on maintenance to being on a mission. And I want to be on a mission about the things of God. And I can't do it alone. Uh, I, I just don't have the ability to do it alone. Uh, I need you. And so I'm glad for you folks that are on a mission with me tonight. And as I preach tonight's message, sometimes some messages are tough because you realize that sometimes you fall short of where you want to be as well. So the challenge is not only to you, but the challenge is also to myself from God's Word uh, as we are on a mission at, uh, as Miracle Revival Church. You know, uh, someone, last week we had some folks who used to attend here, and uh, uh, after church they talked to me, and they said, man, I, I just can't believe it. it seems like every time I come there's new faces, and uh, I, 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 it's, 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 it's so different than some churches where you see the same faces all the time. Nothing wrong with that. We love faithfulness to God, but it's good when we see new faces. I love that. Amen. I have to tell you, Sister Dot, oh, she has been a blessing to me in the few weeks that she's been here. And uh, if you don't know her, get to know her. Amen. We're glad. Sister Beverly, thank you for saying, come to church with me. Amen. Praise God. And sometimes that's all it takes. And, and I know everybody doesn't respond that way when we, but thank God Sister Dot did. Amen. 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 We're glad she's here. And uh, just, uh, well, I, I can say many things. I'm glad for every individual. I don't take any, any of you for granted tonight, so thank you. Ezekiel 33, verse number 7. The Bible says, So thou, O son of man, I have set before you a watchman unto the house of Israel. 
Therefore you shall hear the word uh, at, at my mouth and warn them, uh, them from me. Uh, when I say unto the wicked, O wicked man, you shall surely die. If you do not speak to warn the wicked from his way, that man shall die in his iniquity. But his blood will I require at your hand. But his blood will I require at your hand. Nevertheless, if you warn the wicked of his way to turn from it, if he do, uh, uh, if he do not turn uh, from uh, his way, he shall die in his iniquity, but you have delivered your soul. The Word of God says that uh, God is speaking to Ezekiel, and he says, uh, Oh, son of man, you're a watchman. It's, it's imperative that we understand what is happening here. Uh, we're looking at this passage of Scripture, and there's a terrible, frightening perspective that maybe we look at and we see where the Word of God says that there will be blood on our hands. You know, sometimes when we think about maybe that thought, Brother David, it may make us want to tuck our tail and run, thinking about blood on our hands. Who wants to look and see the blood of someone else, the responsibility for what they've done on our hands? Uh, but uh, as we look at this serious passage of Scripture that the Word of God delivers to us, uh, I need to tell you that it's serious to think about the blood of someone else's soul being upon our hands. I'm not here to project any individual on you. I'm not here to project any type of negativity on you. I, I, I'm here tonight to challenge you as, as, as it challenges my own heart that we need to take the responsibility of sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ serious. I don't want to on Judgment Day look and see that upon my hands are the blood and the responsibility that I failed to give uh, in sharing the gospel with someone else. And they look at me and say, why didn't you tell me to turn from my wicked way? Let me just play a little bit of a platform for a moment and say this. By nature... For the most part, unless I probably have a personal relationship that's pretty tight with you that I know it's secure, I'm not an arguer. I, I, I just, my, my nature, I, I may internally inside, you know what to, but, but I'm not an arguer by nature. Uh, I, I'm not talking about arguing. I'm talking about boldly sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm not talking about picking a fight. I'm not talking about agitating someone. I'm talking about with love and compassion and with mercy sharing the gospel. My wife and I have recently taken our girls to Chocolate World. They love the singing cows. They care about nothing else but the singing cows. And so we like to feed their fancy of singing cows. And so as we were in line, I was just looking at multitudes of people. And Brother David, God loves them all. What heaven's going to be like someday? Then we went to get something to eat. And, and uh, I don't even know if my wife knows, but uh, across from us was a table full of people. And, and I, I, I don't mean to be mean in what I'm about to say, but I really couldn't tell the gender of some of them. Unfortunate, but I couldn't. But one thing that I was reminded that as mixed up as they are, God loves them and wants to bring them to a complete understanding of who He made them to be and who He wants them to be. Amen. And so the best idea, Brother David, wouldn't be for me to go up and say, hey, I don't know what you are. But, but, but the idea would be to exercise love to let them know that God loves them and is concerned for them. There may come a day after building a relationship, they're going to have to come to the truth of knowing that, that God has, has a plan for them. But you know, as much as, as it's mixed up, God still loves those people. God loves those people. And yes, in a crazy culture that we live in, in an upside down world, there is not one individual that God does not love and God does not want to guarantee and secure an eternity in heaven for their soul. And so here it is that 
uh, there's a little imagery that is given to us as we see here in the Old Testament and the idea of this message is, but all major cities in the Old Testament would have individuals that would sit on the walls and fortify their city. And as they would sit there, they would have a distance that they could look and they could see whether it was day or whether it was night. They were to look and they were to see if enemies were to be coming in and try to overtake the walls of the city, get into the city and cause harm or danger to many or maybe just a few particular individuals. And so it was uh, their responsibility within the maximum amount of visibility that was theirs to see that if an enemy or an army approached, it was the duty of that watchman to warn the city of the impending attack that was coming. If a, if a citizen uh, was massacred, if someone was, was killed when a watchman was on duty, the responsibility of that individual whose blood was spilled the blood of that individual will be upon the watchman's hands. What a, what a responsibility. Brother David, what a job. Brother Wallet, and make sure that, you know, it's, it's not everybody else is sleeping, but Brother Dennis, you better stay awake, and, and, and I better know what, what, what's out there, Brother Josh, for as far as my visibility could be. And if I saw an army coming, if I saw the threat, I needed to sound the alarm so that no one would be in danger. And so the Word of God says, Ezekiel speaks, and God spoke to the prophet, and he says, Son of man, I have appointed you to be a watchman for the house of Israel. When I say to the wicked, O oh, wicked man, you shall surely die, and you do not speak to warn that wicked man of his way, that wicked man will die in his iniquity and his blood will I require from your hands. Amen. But if you do your part to warn the wicked man, your hands are free from that responsibility. I want us to think about our responsibility as a believer tonight. I believe that as I look out to this congregation, every one of your believers, you have a relationship with Jesus Christ. You're enjoying the presence of God. God's presence has been good tonight. I've rested in the presence of God. I've drawn strength from the presence of God. But for me to say to any one of us tonight, if we think that we've come in here just to be self-absorbed in the presence of God without having an impact outside of here, we are very, very wrong. Because there's a responsibility to warn the wicked. Let's talk about the relevance of the blood on our hands. Some may say, let's just, let's just get the, the table clear right away. Some may say, well, this text, because of its seriousness and its influence, uh, 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 the tendency today is, is to lay the issue of, of, of blood on our hands. Uh, well, we can't do that because it's Old Testament uh, irrelevancy to us. Well, I disagree. I disagree 100%. I'll tell you why here in just a few minutes. It's not updated. It's, it's not just something that happened before Christ that, that, that doesn't have relevancy to us. Amen. But there is a, a, a real relevancy to us because we find when we turn to the book of Acts, chapter number 20, I'm going to turn there. I'm going to read verse number uh, 26 and verse number 27. The Word of God says, Paul was preaching uh, here and he's preaching in Ephesus. And he says, Wherefore, I, I, I take you to, uh, to record this day that I am pure from, all, uh, from the blood of all men, for I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. Paul was giving validation. Paul was giving significance to what God had already spoken to Ezekiel's heart. Paul says, listen, I, I, I'm clear. Let it be on the record today that I did not shun or shirk. I did not run from my responsibility. But I gave the counsel of God to everyone that was in Ephesus. Amen. There is a relevance to our day that we are still required to share the truth. 
I know that we live in a day of toleration. I understand that ungodliness is accepted as right. I understand all of that. I'm not asking you to change the hearts of men. We can't do that. I'm not asking you to get in a debate or an argument. I'm not asking you to put yourself in a, in a, in a, in a position that's bad. I'm telling you from God's Word, we have a responsibility to share the truth of the Gospel. If a man or a woman or a boy or a girl or God without Jesus Christ. Amen. And we have failed to give them the gospel. They will die and go to hell, but their blood will be upon our hands for eternity. I don't want to live life with regret. Amen. I want to live it with purpose. Brother Josh, sometimes I'll use words. Sometimes I'll use my life. Amen. But Brother Wally, one thing for sure, it's my responsibility to warn the wicked of his way. Everybody has an ideology of the Word of God. Everybody has an ideology of, of religion. Everybody has an ideology of how church people should live. Amen. It's irrelevant if you do not have the blood of Jesus Christ applied to your life and you have not repented of your sins, you will die and go to hell. Bottom line. It's our responsibility the war, the wicked of the way. Brother David, that's what puts our church from maintenance to a mission. Amen. That's what drives us that we share with others. Listen, I know sometimes family can be difficult. It can be the most difficult that we can deal with, but we have to be faithful and sharing what the Word of God tells <coughs> us. Because you don't want to someday stand before God and eternity before your loved one and them say, why didn't you tell me? There's a responsibility. Listen, a failure to discharge a God-given responsibility means that the blood of eternal souls is upon our feet. So, as we look at the relevance of blood, I think we need to look at the reality of the blood on our hands. Relevance suggests reality. And there's nothing more frightening than the reality in the, in the life of any Christian than to be held responsible for the souls of another. Mr. Tiffany, when our girls were born, I remember standing in the NICU. I probably shared this a lot of times, but I remember standing home, uh, one of our girls, I don't know which one it was. But I said to my wife, I said, just think one day this little girl might break off on her. Hard to imagine. But Sister God, I also realized I didn't just follow my child, but I took responsibility for bringing soul into this world. So from my home to the community to everywhere I go, I need to take the responsibility of not being guilty for the blood of someone else on my hands. I want to be diligent at home. I want to be diligent everywhere I go. No matter what our occupation is, it doesn't segregate us, Brother David, from the responsibility of the call Christ gave us when He saved us to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with others. We don't take off our Sunday hat and put it to the side all week long, put it back on next Sunday, but it's a part of who we are when we share the gospel. Listen, I know that there may be homes where some folks have spouses that are unsaved, children and grandchildren that are unsaved. Listen, I know that you can't count them over the head day in and day out. I understand that. But there's also a point of responsibility that we share the truth in such a wise way. God, you make us wise as serpents and harmless as doves that we may share the gospel and that we may take the reality of blood being upon our hands 
real that we're not responsible for anyone's soul and their blood in eternity. God, help us to know that the relevance is for today and the reality is real. The reality of guilt. Really, it comes down to this. That it shows our life is anything but led by the Spirit of God. Why it's important to be led by the Holy Ghost every day of our life, allowing the Spirit of God to move, because the Spirit of God will nudge you, it will anoint you, it will fall upon you to share the gospel with folks. Amen. Because we are living a life that's led by the Spirit. Amen. And I don't want to live short of living a life that's led by the Spirit. Amen. I, I don't want to have careless living. I don't want my testimony to be obstructed by some type of sin or attitude that's not pleasing to God. But, but I want to rid my life of anything that will hinder me from sharing the gospel with someone else. God, help me to live a life that's not full of spirit rooting habits but a life that gives liberty to the Spirit of God. So that the reality may be that I share the truth of God's Word with others. So we look at the relevance of the blood. We look at the reality of the blood. So how do we get the removal of the blood off, off of our hands? I believe that the way that we do it is, Brother David, our life is led by sharing the gospel and seeing lives converted by the power of Jesus Christ. Listen, I think sometimes we go about it wrong. We try to change people before they're even saved. Number one, it's not our job to change them. Yes, we want to disciple hearts. I'll get to that in a moment. And yes, we as elders and, and, and those that are mature in the faith, we want to nurture others, but we can't change them. It takes the Spirit of God to change a person. And if a person changes simply because they're conforming to what you want them to do, then it's done nothing for their soul. It's done nothing for their eternity. But oh, when the Spirit of God begins to work and move in a person's life, that is what makes the difference. So tonight I need to tell you that, 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 that the work of the ministry is this, that we should be building up the body of Christ. Listen, we should be soul winners and we should be disciples and we should be disciples that are making disciples, helping others become set disciples for Jesus Christ. I believe it's a domino effect as we show the love of God to others and they fall in love with Jesus. Amen. And, and we help show them the importance of loving Jesus and sharing that same love of Jesus with others and it affects men and women and we all become disciples of Jesus. Jesus Christ. Amen. We make disciples and then we train disciples. Amen. I want you to think about this. How many people have you won for Christ in your life? You don't need to answer me. It's a challenge tonight. How many have you won? Because you're doing your best to change. You're doing your best to make sure that your hands are not responsible for the blood. Of and tonight I'm preaching a real this is what the love needs to grow for each of us as believers. Knowing that we can remove the blood of others from our hands. Listen, are we actively warning others of Jesus Christ? We can remove the blood by being consistent in the concern of the lost. It's been said before this, people don't, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Do we really have a heart of God that's for people? That bottom line, we love them because Christ loved them. We love the unlovable, we love those who are intimidating. Everyone in between. 
because we don't want to be responsible for blood of their souls on our hands. If we don't feel concerned, if we fail to share, we will be responsible for the blood of others. Jude said this, and some having compassion can make a big difference. Others saving with uh, fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments that are spotted by the flesh. Amen. God help us to see people as men and women who are dying and going to hell. Listen, I know lots of good people, Brother David. My life has allowed me the opportunity to be with many, 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 many people. And I pray that they walk away knowing that that guy loves God. But that guy has also given me the message that God loves me. And there's a responsibility for me to respond to the love of God and turn from my present condition. The phenomenal that's sweeping the world and the religious world, coming unto God as we are and thinking that God accepts us and leaves us there. There's salvation from nothing. But I'm thankful for Jesus. Amen. He shall save His people from their sins. Amen. I come to Him with my filthy garments and rags. I come to Him and Brother Justin, I reason with Him. And though my sins be as scarlet, praise God, they are washed white as the new driven snow. Praise God that when we come to Him, amen, the message of the Gospel that warns us there is imminent danger ahead. Back home in West Virginia on the Maryland border, right there on the Potomac River, if you come down over the Bloomington Mountain, most of you probably don't know what I'm talking about, but you come down over the mountain, it's called Backbone Mountain, you're wide and you're wide, and there's a steep hill that you come down, it's the main drive. But you have to make a very sharp right turn. Uh, the road turns. Brother David, there is a mountain there. They have a cement wall there. And upon that wall, Brother Josh, there are crosses that are there. Many, many crosses. I don't know how many numbers are there. They've been there since I was a boy. Each cross represents men and women who have died because they failed to make the right hand turn. And Sister Beth, they ran right into the cement wall. And there they lost their life. However, some years ago, upon the mountain, they put Sister Dot flashing yellow lights there. That is a warning that up ahead there is a very drastic turn. Be careful. Use caution. You know what they were doing? They were warning people of intimate, intimate danger that was ahead. You need to reckon. You need to reason. You need to slow down. You need to pay attention. We are, we are the yellow lights. We are the caution. Amen. Are you hooked up to the currency that flashes your light? Is your bulb inside? Is it still lit and going on? Or do you need to change bulbs? Because God wants us to warn the Lord. Listen, consistent concern for other people. Cultivating in our lives to bring converts into the kingdom of God. But I think the last thing I want to look at is this to me is that we, we renew a consistent commitment to God, to God. Each of us need to do that. God will be consistent in the one of others that they need to turn from their sin and wicked. I said to you already, I'm not talking about having a lot of this I don't want you to be marked that way. God doesn't want you to be marked that way. God doesn't want this church to be marked that way. But God wants us to be firm with 
with the truth of the gospel, but in love, share the truth. I'll tell you personally, I'm turned off by harshness of people. If you're harsh to me, I'm going to shy away. Because I just don't want that way. I don't know how to take people that are that way. But when I know someone's really concerned, and they love, and when they care. I don't mind constructive criticism. It may hurt. But if I know you have my best interest in mind, 